Hello everyone, my name is Joanna McElnay. I am the community manager at Creative Spirit, an org the first of its kind organization dedicated to helping place people with intellectual and developmental disabilities in fair wage roles. Today, um, I am a seemingly white lady. My pronouns are she, her. I have light hair and light eyes, and I am wearing a um, white shirt with black with a black blazer. Um, and I am joined today by a really special guest. Um, her name is Gianna Morello in honor of Williams Syndrome um, Awareness Month, which is this month in May. So Gianna, would you I would love if you could introduce yourself to the people. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Gianna Morello. As you can see, I'm wearing a blue shirt with flowers on it. I'm a white <laughs> male and I have dark hair and hazel eyes. <laughs> Not everyone can see though, G, remember? So oh, true. So as as you will hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as you will hear. I love it. I love it. Yeah. As you as you can see, G and I have known each other a very long time. Um, I would say it's about six years now. Yeah. Something long time. Like that. And I've just seen you blossom and I'm really grateful that um, you can be here today and talk a little about William syndrome with us and of course. Um, let's get into it. Awesome. So um, let's give the people some feedback or let's give them some context to this conversation, I should say. Yes. Um, so May is officially, let's say, William Syndrome Awareness Month. Um, but the William Syndrome Association, which Gianna Morello is a member of the advisory council, actually, um, is the most comprehensive resource for people and families living with um, William Syndrome. And they work around the clock to raise awareness about um, William syndrome. Um, this is outside of doctors and therapists and lots of wonderful people on the medical side, but William syndrome really helps with bringing all those things together in a social sense. Um, William syndrome is a genetic condition that is present at birth, um, but it can affect anyone. Um, it occurs in one in 10,000 births, which I didn't know worldwide. Um, and it's characterized in the medical society as a developmental and learning challenge. Adults with Williams syndrome join the workforce in a variety of positions and with support live full and productive lives. So gee, um, what, do you, what do you think when you hear that introduction? What does that make you feel like? It's true, honestly. I mean, all of us just want to be loved and, you know, be able to get a job and to be seen and heard, you know, because Living with Williams syndrome is very hard. As you know, there's a lot of medical issues that go with it and a lot of um, learning differences that go with it. But we're still human beings, you know? And so I think everyone should try to understand what we're going through, even if they don't really know what Williams syndrome is. And, you know, try to respect us and, like, and try to, like, understand. So that way they they know that we're good people and we have good hearts and we're not like anybody else, you know, we're, we have pe we're people with Williams syndrome, but we're still human beings. We still have hearts. We still want to do things in life. We still want to grow up. So, you know, we're, we're just like you guys. So. Absolutely. Um, so G, I was wondering if you could give us, um, a little bit of the history. How did you get, um, connected first connected or in general connected with creative spirit and why are you still part of our community today? So I got joined by Laurel Rossi because, you know, it's her company. And I met her through the Williamson Association and I met her daughter, Mia. And so um, it was hard for me to find a job, you know. And so Laurel was like, join Creative Spirit. So then I was like, okay. And I've joined it and it's been really, really fun and awesome. And I got to meet you and all these amazing people six years ago. So I'm very blessed to have a community that's willing to support me and and be there for me, you know, when, when I need help or anything in that realm, so. And we love you. We think you're fantastic. And we're so grateful that we still have value to you. I think that's one of the greatest things. Thank you. Um, just a little icebreaker. So could you tell me something? What is the favorite, you're like, what's the thing you're most proud of in yourself? How hard I've worked, how hard I wanted to get things done. Um, I graduated college. I got two degrees. I got my associate's degree at one college and my bachelor's degree at another. And um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's really hard because a lot of people, you know, again, want to be like everyone else and like graduate and have friends and all this other stuff. But there were times where I really wanted to give up, but I was like, you know what? I got to keep going. I got to keep pushing. So I worked really, really hard. And in 2021, I graduated and got my bachelor's degree at Ram Poe in music performance. And in 2019, I graduated at Centenary and got my associate's degree in liberal arts. So it was two different colleges, but I learned a lot from both. And I'm very grateful to have wonderful parents who are there to support me and help me whenever I needed any help. Um, so, yeah, I think working hard really, like, really wanted to flow my drive. You know what I mean? Like, push me. And I wanted to get it done. You know, I wanted to graduate and say, look, if I can, you can too. So it was it was a great ride, college. Um, but yeah, I think working hard was is something I'm very proud of. I love that. So. I love that. And tell me a little bit about this. This is a new position for you. What is it like sitting on the advisory board for the Williams Syndrome Association? So um, actually, the Williams Syndrome Association came to Westfield a couple weeks ago, and we had a little retreat here. So it was really cool to meet everyone in person. It was my first time meeting everyone in person. And it was really cool because a lot of people on the board are in different positions on the board. So I got to learn about what each person does on the board and all that kind of stuff. But it's also, you know, important because as a person with Williams syndrome, you know, you want what's best for everyone else with Williams syndrome, you know? So the board is essentially made up of a lot of committees to help make Williams syndrome, you know, like easier to handle and to go through. And it's it's been really fun so far, you know? I mean, I've only been on meetings with them on Zoom and I've also been with them in person, as I said before, here. So it's it's been really cool to meet everyone and to hear their stories about their children or their families with Williams syndrome and meet someone like me who has Williams syndrome themselves, you know? and so. It was really cool to like hear how they're doing, how their families are doing and what we need extra help on. And so I'm part of the adult programming committee. So what I do pretty much is I'm going to be, you know, planning um, like stuff for adults and helping them grow into, you know, stronger, happier adults. So it's it's been really fun, you know, so I love it. So fantastic. And I love, I think that you guys have such an organic process and um, it's wonderful to hear you talk about it because I know it's uh, it's great to tap into the places that really make you feel seen and heard. So I love to hear that you feel that way about that. Um, and you know, like we're, we're a big family, just like Creative Spirit, you know, we're all a big family. We're all in this together. We're all trying to get to the same point. Sometimes it's hard because a lot of people with Williams syndrome have different health issues or more severe health issues than others with Williams syndrome. And so it's, you know, we want to help those that have more severe health issues, but we want to also be there for everyone else that doesn't have severe health issues. And we just all want to work together and make it a happier and better place for them to live in, you know? So I love that. I love that. And I can resonate so deeply with that because that's how I feel about um, being a person with ADHD and um, dyslexia and also having my share of mental health challenges along my journey. Um, hearing you say that is so comforting because I think there is, in my opinion, ethically, there should be no competition in the space of disabilities exactly. because we are already segregated. So we exactly. need to be there for each other and we need to exactly. support and empower one another. And um, exactly. you and I share that philosophy, I know. And I just think it's great that, <laughs> that Williams Syndrome is, is on top of things and really leading the way in a way for folks, um, adults with Williams Syndrome to succeed and be independent and follow their dreams, really. Yeah, I, I think it's great. You know, I, I love everyone on the board. They're very nice. You know, they're all smart in their own ways. And they always share like inspiring, meaningful points. And whenever um, we're at the retreat, they would be like, oh, you know, Deanna, I love this about you. You're amazing in this, this, this. And I'm like, look at you. Like, you've conquered so much. You've been through a lot with your family. But like having you here on the board is meaningful because you're trying to help your siblings or your family members, but also everyone else in the world that has Williams syndrome. So it's very important, you know, we're all sisters and brothers and we all love each other. You know, it's, as I said, it's a big family. So you're I'm grateful. You're incredible. 
um, the work you do is so important. And I'm, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for what you do every day. I think it's incredible. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the love fest continues. Um, I'm, I, as you can tell, I'm a little biased. I think Gianna is an incredible person and just love seeing you succeed and be happy. Um, so I would say one of the next things that's really interesting to a lot, might be really interesting to our viewers, especially this month. Um, and you, you know, you've had an incredible journey for finding employment and there's still challenges that you work through every day that we've talked about. But I think what's really interesting to folks is, um, what do you want like employers to know or, or understand about folks with this, with, with William syndrome specifically, but if you want to, you know, bring it to the broader disability space, that's okay as well. But William syndrome in particular. Um, I, well, we're all caring people. We're all loving people. We all want to have a job. We all want to have a good life. You know, we want, we all want to strive and succeed and show everyone we can do everything. So I think the most important thing is for, you know, if people are looking for jobs, you should pick people that would be perfect for your company. And I feel like a lot of times they place people with disabilities in general in places where they don't succeed. And I think that's the problem because a lot of people don't want to hire people with disabilities. And I think that should change. Um, I believe that we are all human beings and we deserve to be treated like regular, not regular, but typical people. And we should all have a job too, even if you know, it requires a job coach. We deserve to be loved the same as everyone else that's working in that company. And so I think making sure that you place people in the right areas is the best idea because then you can see them succeed, you know, but if you place them somewhere that where they don't belong, they won't succeed. But and you have to also understand that there are a lot of challenges that we go through. So if there's things that we need help with, you know, we deserve to get help and it's, it's okay to ask for help. So. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Giving grace and space and dignity to yeah. folks with Williams syndrome is so key. And I think anyone with a disability would maybe agree with that. Yeah. Um, no matter where they are in their hiring process. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's incredible. Um, what advice, and this is now for your peers, um, since you said you're head of, um, you're in a committee where your programming is directed towards adults with Williams syndrome, what would you, what advice would you give other folks seeking employment that may have disabilities? Um, honestly, I would say that, hmm, look, like I, I would I would see if people in your community or people in your family know a place where you could get a job. I think a lot of times nowadays people get jobs through other people. So I think that's very important um, because if you try to find a job on your own, you know, you, you want to, you want to do it and everything, but sometimes it could be hard to succeed at it. So I think looking, finding someone who understands Williams syndrome and is willing to find a job that, you know, has people that, want to learn and understand and will, you know, accommodate what you need is very important too. So accommodations are very important, but yeah. it doesn't mean we're not human. You know, we're all human beings and we deserve to be treated like typical employees, you know? And so I think that's important. Finding someone who knows a place where you could work. Yeah. I think, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I think, Gee, you and I have talked about this personally, but I think it's an important topic. What is something you you and I both have had jobs. We've lost jobs. We've gotten jobs. You know, we've we've cycled through the whole process as adults. We're, we're nearing the end of our 20s, right? Um, going into our 30s soon. Um, me a little bit sooner than you, I believe. <laughs> and, um, you know, one of the things that I think is really interesting is what having a job, like where do you work now? Tell us a little bit about your jobs now, you don't just the broad strokes. And then, you know, what, why do you work is my question. And I know it's a little bit loaded. Um, and I'll answer this too at the end. But what, what do you get out of working that that makes you want to wake up in the morning? And what maybe what are the, some of the challenges? So first of all, I work at the Arc of New Jersey. So now I'm working at the Arc of New Jersey 
in New Brunswick. Um, and I'm the administrative assistant there. Um, so I go there three days a week. I work 20 hours a week and I pretty much help the head um, on what she needs help with. So I'll do shredding. I'll do a lot of computer work. I'll do cleaning. I'll do a lot of different things, you know, whatever she needs help with. So that's my Ark New Jersey job. Um, I also work at a grocery store called ShopRite and I work one day a week and I return items and I help bag for cashiers. So I help cashiers and everything like that. And then I work at an insurance company as well. And I'm the administrative assistant there, but I only work over there one day a week. Um, so I also shred and do computer work and everything that the CEO needs help with. So I work with him. His name is Frank. And he has a daughter who actually has a daughter with Williams syndrome. And my mom found him through the Williams syndrome association. So while we were talking to his daughter, so I'm thankful for him. I'm grateful for him and his family for giving me this opportunity to work at that job. And I'm thankful for Joe Mancini because he helped me get the job at the Ark of New Jersey. So I'm thankful for you guys. I love you guys. Um, and yeah, so I love that. that's, that's what I worked so far. Um, let's see. My challenges are sometimes I feel like I get like nervous and confused sometimes, but I work through it. I figure out problems on my own. Like yesterday I had a problem at the Ark of New Jersey and I figured it out myself and I'm proud of that. Um, but sometimes struggles and problems are hard to solve by yourself, but I I was like, I'm not going to stop until I get it, you know? So. I love that. I love that. And like you said, it's okay to ask for help. And I think folks forget like everyone yeah. in an office situation needs to, you know, collaborates at some point for their job, yeah. whether it be, you know, the most basic task in your day, day, your list of things to do that day or the most complex. And I think it's great that you see yourself progressing also because I, I, I may be reading into it, but I think there's a development that happen, has happened over the last six years for you where, you know, you've learned how to be more independent from the beginning to the end. And I think, but that's part of the natural growth of being a professional and maturing as a professional. And those are all normal things and okay things that happen when you're in yeah. roles. Um, and I think that's great. And just hearing you talk about those different people and those different roles. I mean, I think I think what folks need to also understand about the disability space, because I've I've heard this before, is you know, we kind of help each other out. And yeah. the reason why we help each other out is because the the rest of a typical world doesn't really care to get to know us. We're too difficult, right? Yeah. And I think we need to understand, and this comes with finding opportunities for work for folks like you and me and uh, like us and those that are different than us, but, uh, but in the same um, identity, maybe. Um, I think we, what our work stands for in terms of providing awareness to, to individuals with Williams syndrome, and then on my side of things, folks with intellectual and developmental delay, debil div <laughs> welcome to dyslexia, developmental disabilities. Um, I think it's just there's the world needs to embrace us more so that we don't have to always just rely on folks that are so insular to the community. I think we all want to bridge this gap into the mainstream society, but we're not yeah. finding spaces that are welcoming to us. Yeah, um, exactly. And so I think that's a, an important thing to note is folks folks that are watching this on the outside of the community space that may be allies or champions who can empathize with us. We need you to bring us in. We want you to partner with Creative Spirit and help us help you bridge those gaps and make it comfortable for your employees that exist that may be on the typical side of things to be comfortable with folks with working with working with folks with disabilities. Because at the end of the day, what we hear from every one of our partnerships is the enrichment that um, our folks in our pipeline bring to those roles is insurmountable and priceless. And in a lot of ways, as we think about the future of work, we need to be innovative and we need to be problem solvers. And that's what we do best, right? Exactly. You know, and, and, and I also like was talking to a lot of people on the board and there's some people on some committees on the board 
that don't even understand Williams syndrome. They're there to help though. You know, like they're they're there because they're willing to embrace us and they're willing to like help us. So as you said, Joanna, I think it's important for the outside typical world to embrace people like us because we're nice people, we're good people. You know, just because we have a disability doesn't mean that we're bad people and that we're not smart and we're not deserving and we're not willing, you know, and and I, I think Honestly, people with disabilities are some of the hardest working people because we we never give up. There are times where we want to give up. We never do, you know, and just like typical people, they, there are times where they want to give up. They don't. But we, we, we understand life in different ways than other people do. And I think it's important to maybe, you know, accept that and to be like, oh, I didn't think of it this way, but maybe I will now, you know, and, and things like that, you know, or, oh, I didn't see it from this point of view, but I understand your point of view. And I see it now. So like, Mm -hmm. I agree, it's important for those who don't have disabilities to explore the, you know, the world and meet someone, you know, if you see a person with disability walking on the street, or, you know, if they're lonely, or this or that, you should you should talk to them and and make sure they're okay, you know, and and be there for them. Because we all we want to be is loved, just like you guys out there. So, you know, Yeah, and be treated like anyone else. I mean, in a lot of ways, I think I think we don't want special treatment. We want to work. Yeah. We want to be treated and strive and earn our way in this world. I and don't think anyone wants a special treatment. Uh, anyone wants charity. We want to earn respect from our peers, whether they be community folks or mainstream folks. And we want to show our talents. We want to exactly. grow professionally. Um, we want mentors. We want um, companies to want us. I mean, I think we yeah. we are valuable on so many levels. And you we know, are. just because a research document says it, you know, there's a lot of other ways to find it out. But there are lots of research documents out there that say we are great employees too. So if you're yeah. trying to make the case internally, this is for folks that want to be allies to us. If you want to make a case to your HR departments check out our higher different research at creative spirit we have great insights in there that you can bring to your leadership that explore you know talent out in 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 the neurodiverse and the disability space and mental health space and we're not difficult there's challenges just like anyone else but i think it's i think we're impressive i think we're talented we're creative we're anything that anyone else could be um and and just get to know folk folks with disabilities. I mean, be a friend, just be a human. And, you know, don't ask really pointed personal questions, maybe. I think that's there should be <laughs> dignity in that process of getting to know someone. But um and grace. Yeah, sometimes grace. But you know what? It's okay if you make a mistake. I, I personally, some people might disagree with me on this, but I think I'd rather have someone make a mistake trying to connect with me than not try to connect with me at all. Exactly. I feel about that. I, I feel that because I want people to understand that I'm a good person. You know, everyone in the world doesn't have to like you, but pretty like, you know, or me, like any, everyone in the world doesn't have to like us, but we still want to be accepted by the typical world. And I think, you know, as you said, it's hard because a lot of people see us as people that are, you know, too hard to tolerate or too hard to be with or too hard to understand. But all we want is just love and and care and for you guys to be friends with us, you know, we're good people. And it's, as you said, it's really hard because typical people are a lot of times are in their own world when we're, we're over in this hard, dark space sometimes, because, you know, we want other friends too, you know, I mean, everyone in the world, you know, has challenges, but we should all be there for each other. I love that. I love that. Um, I just want to be cognizant of the time, so I'm going to get back to the list of questions. Um, the last one I have, or there's two more here. Um, if we don't get through them all, it's fine. Um, I think we only have like 10 more minutes on the clock, so, um, and I want to respect our viewers' time, so that's another reason why I'm looking at it. But um, what is the most important thing you've learned from your career journey so far, in your opinion? To never give up, to keep pushing. If there are times when things are hard or you don't understand things, keep working at it. Don't give up. Keep 
keep trying to pick at it and be like, why is this happening? Why did I make a mistake on this? What, you know, what can I do to fix this? And I think never giving up is an important thing because I feel like a lot of times people want to give up, but you got to see the bigger picture and there, there are better things out there, you know, and, and you have to make mistakes to learn. So I feel like if you don't make a mistake, you're not learning anything. So making mistakes is a part of being a human. It's okay to make mistakes, but never give up. Keep pushing and keep fighting for what you deserve and what you want. So. I love that. I love that. Um, and then my last question is, um, and this will kind of round us out. And Gianna, thank you so much for your time. This has been so valuable. Um, thank you. You're an incredible person. We love you at Creative Spirit. We will always support you no matter what. And um, I'm really grateful to know you as a person. I think you're incredibly talented. So are you. Thank you. Um, so the last question we have here, and then we'll close it out, is um, how has being connected to Creative Spirit changed maybe your career, your perspectives, um, or has it helped you boost your confidence? I know that's kind of a leading question, but like, what are the qualities that you think you gained from being a part of the Creative Spirit community? And like maybe the peer to peer group at Creative Spirit Connect or in general, or being on the, the board for Creative, um, our advisory board for the Creative Spirit Connect group, which is our peer to peer group. By the way, I'm going to do a little plug, um, which is our, it's currently on Facebook, but we um, are a group of folks. Um, allies and um, professionals with disabilities. Um, and we do have in person events, we do have virtual events. Um, and you can, I'll leave the link in the, um, the uh, description of this event. But anyway, end of plug. Go ahead. G. <laughs> um, do you want me to remind you what the question was? Yeah. Yeah. Can you? <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry, I should have done that after. Um, okay. So how has being connected with creative spirit connect and like the community um maybe changed your career changed your goals um um yourself as a person yourself as a professional what what's your feedback so being on creative creative spirit has helped me a lot um i feel like because i've been on creative spirit i got to meet people with different disabilities and i got i get to understand you know what they're going through and be friends with them and learn more about who they are and why they are who they are. And I think it's important to do something like creative spirit, because as you know, I've, I, well, viewers don't know, but I've spoken at a lot of ad week um, events with creative spirit and it really boosted my confidence because I feel like I'm getting better at talking to people. I love talking to people, but <laughs> we love listening, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I got to learn, I get to learn so much about other people. And I think after when we got to meet everyone in the audience, you know, if you wanted to mingle or, or anything like that, there are a lot of people out there with cool opportunities, you know, and I feel like being part of Creative Spirit, there's so many opportunities that no one else can give you. And I think that it's very valuable and it's worth it. You know, being on Creative Spirit is very worth it. Um, I got to meet Joan Jett <laughs> because of a Creative Spirit event. I got to walk her down to her green room. I freaked out. I cried. <laughs> I love her. She's one of my favorite artists of all time. And, you know, it's, it's little things like that that mean, mean a lot to you. But Creative Spirit is full of different disabilities. And so it's, it's really cool to meet other people and, you know, learn more about them and gain the love and respect for them you know so I think it's it's really cool so I'm thankful for Creative Spirit I'm thankful for you Joanna you're wonderful and beautiful and kind and loving and awesome okay. and so is everyone Creative Spirit you know so <laughs> it's 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 been a great journey so far and I'm really excited to continue to be on Creative Spirit and keep on going so we love you and we will support you forever and ever <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here today and your time is so valuable to us this information is going to be very helpful and distributed to our peers as well as our partners and um gee thank you for being vulnerable thank you for your leadership and the incredible 
incredible work that you do at the Williams Syndrome Association. Um, folks, if you're looking to connect with either Williams Syndrome Association or Creative Spirit or Creative Spirit Connect, which is the peer to peer group I mentioned, where we focus on belonging and networking and all that good stuff and independence. Um, I will put those links um, in our copy and um, thank you all so, so much for listening to us, for being here, for being present. Thank and, you guys. And we wish you the best. Yes. Have a wonderful Friday. Yes, exactly. All right, folks. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.